it was typical of Richard Mariner that while the world, quite literally it seemed, was falling to pieces around him, he should be standing there with a boiling kettle steaming in one steady hand, looking down into the throat of a coffee mug where a tea bag was wedged, apparently immovably, just below the lid. The fist holding the kettle tilted infinitesimally as though the huge hand and the mighty forearm controlling it were part of some robotic machine. The tiniest imaginable drop of water fell steaming through the silent air. It landed in the centre of the little tea-filled pillow which seemed to be so securely at the rim and it smashed the tea bag down into the bottom of the mug. Richard froze for a moment, looking with fearsome concentration. Then the hand holding the kettle tilted decisively and the boiling water filled the mug to the brim. The simple weight of it is bound to be almost unimaginable, Richard rumbled, his voice like an echo of the earthquake itself. He glanced across at Robin, the wild blue dazzle of his gaze locking with the steady grey of her own. If Captain Chang is right, and the whole of the Three Gorges Dam failed when the earthquake struck. Then the simple weight of water coming down towards us will be almost unimaginable. For Mei Feng, the experience after the telltale silence began with a sound as though a great wind was rushing up behind her. She could hear it roaring nearer over the city at her back. No, more than a wind, she thought. It sounded as though a huge, old steam locomotive were coming rushing out of a tunnel as big as the sky, its boiler blowing and its whistle screaming. She heard it coming, and yet it was somehow a shocking surprise when it arrived, and arrived so swiftly. The building beneath her heaved, rolled like the deck of a ship in a storm. It was oddly shocking that it should do so, though she had known in her bones that it would. 